My name's Mark, I'm the producer, ex-IO Interactive Developer and IDOS Developer before that. Hi, I'm Lee, I'm one of the developers here. Um, I've been making games for about 18 years. Uh, most recently I was in charge of level design and all sorts of design on the new Hitman game. And this is Mutant Year Zero, Road to Eden. It's the first time we're publicly showing it. So, um, quite exciting for us. Yeah. So we'll start with a, a small cinematic introduction um, to the game world for you to watch, so you can get a bit more into the characters and into the world, and then we'll we'll start a level. Yeah. yeah. Just go into that now. Let that play for you. Of course, the world ends. You did it to us. When the ice melted, you said nothing. When the plague spread, you did nothing. When the nukes dropped, you became nothing. At least that's what the Elder says. But cheer up. You'll be happy to know that despite your mistakes, life remains. In a small settlement high above a raging river, people are living and thriving. We call it the Ark. The Ark is humanity's last outpost, a lonely island in an ocean of chaos. Within these walls, we help each other create a new civilization on the ruins of the old one with the guidance of our leader, the Elder. The Elder tells us we're safe as long as we never leave, because outside these walls lies the zone, the never-ending wasteland. A mass grave spanning the planet, littered with your crumbling monuments to your hubris and arrogance. What the Elder chooses not to tell us is our food and water supplies are running dangerously low. That's why he relies on stalkers. Adventurers who leave the Ark, explore the zone and scavenge for precious resources. Stalkers are tough enough to resist the rot and they got the smarts and the firepower to keep the zone ghouls at bay. Stalkers have to be more than human. That's me, Mr. More Than Human. A.K.A. a mutant. I look weird to you, but hey, you look weird to me. So let's leave it at that. If the Stalkers come back from the zone alive, the Ark survives another day. If the Stalkers don't come back, the legacy of mankind will be lost forever. At least, that's what the Elder says. Alright, so... Uh, I'm just going to go into... The game and Lee, can you explain to us where we are currently yep. in the game? So, welcome to the woods, somewhere in Sweden, or the zone as our characters like to call it. And we have Selma, Dux, and Barman who are out on an adventure. And if you just pause the game a second, Mark, and we can. So, here we're playing a level which is around mid game, I would say. Yeah. It's about that. And we're here to recover a powerful generator which can generate electricity, which we want to take back to our ARC, because that will be uh, very useful for us. And we've learnt about this generator <coughs> from a level we were in previously, an old bunker complex, which had just been raided by a ghoul clan who slaughtered everybody. But we managed to find a survivor down there who told us all about the ghouls and how they killed everyone, and stole the magical light-giving generator, and took it up north to this ghoul camp called the lair of the horned devil so that's where we are now where we're going to go and take the generator for ourselves yep so uh let's just uh head over there just gonna go towards where the entrance to the camp is this is the ghoul base oh don't worry about that we'll uh ignore that for now this is it the lair of the horned devil Never seen the Horned Devil, but Oops. I hear he's a handful. Yeah, real barrel of laughs. Butchering settlements for fun. They just mess with the wrong goddamn stalkers. We can't let them slaughter another settlement. 
This ends right here, right now. So the game has a lot of real-time exploring, so looking for new items to help you progress. Yeah. Finding your know, environmental storytelling, notes you can pick up that give you hints at hidden locations and things along those lines. But for now we're going to attack this camp and get this generator. Yeah, so let's head into the camp. We're just gonna look at the main entrance quick. Listen, we're not up to this right now. Disengage. So you can see this isn't probably the best way to get into the camp. <clears throat> uh, there's a large ominous figure stood on the bridge. Uh, no cover to get into and there's a big light um, so we're really easily spotted there <laughs> usually uh, a sign of uh, possible danger is electricity because electricity is quite a rare occurrence in the zone so if it's, if it's there it's probably well guarded yeah we're building the game as like a tactical uh, adventure game nothing no one comes no one dares come here and challenge us yeah we strong we got metal giant Oh, be quiet! Enough of you! Get back to your post! So, we have a, a small encounter here with two enemies, and as you can see around the Howler Ghoul, this uh, big white ring. So this is how we communicate what the enemy can hear and see. And if you get caught within the ring, then tactical combat will begin where the enemy has the first turn, which will leave you in a bad tactical um, position. But you can also, outside the ring, start ambush at any time where you will enter tactical combat where you get the first turn. Yeah, so I'm going to do that now. Because I want to get rid of the Howler Ghoul. I didn't go into cover there. I need to go move into cover so the, quick. The Howler Ghoul is quite nasty because, as you can see, she has this big trumpet on her back. So when she gets a turn, she will blow the trumpet, which will is like a ghoul war cry, which will cause new ghouls to arrive to the combat scene and enter the battle. So you'll end up with reinforcements spawning into the fight and you don't really want that so we use our stealth weapons on two of our characters Selma and Ducks to um, to silently take down the Howler Ghoul without anybody noticing so we can just get rid of her so I'm gonna bring oh I brought Borm in there that's all right yeah he's that got a very noisy fault. gun so we should probably yeah I'm gonna uh, bring Ducks here instead now I'm not putting him into cover at the moment because I'm pretty certain that these ghouls aren't much of a problem there's, there's two guys here yeah, for some reason I know that they're there so I'm just going to use a mutation of course a game called mutant would have some mutations in it now ducks has got this uh, moth wings mutation which will give me a hundred percent crit chance if yep. I'm higher because I've got a high ground advantage here so still not enough to get the howler ghoul uh, but I must kill her with the next move so bombing has got a shot in his uh, now the other guy's going to hear me regardless, so I'm going to use this loud weapon, it doesn't matter to me. That's kind of okay, because we've only got one ghoul to deal with, whereas if she survived, she would call in reinforcements and we would have many ghouls to deal with. Yeah. So so this guy's coming, he's pretty small fry, and for some reason we know he's the only one in this little area here. <laughs> um, but normally we'd have to be very careful, because there could be other ghouls that we haven't spotted that might yeah, just so join the battle. You would sneak around a lot more and so, uh, see if you could see uh, anybody else. Let's, uh, let's get rid of this guy. No so he's, he's got a really good position, the pistol ghoul, because he's hiding in a high cover. So he's almost impossible to hit unless you can flank him. I'm going to have a go at him. I'm pretty certain I can get him. 61? So, yeah, I'm going to just... Okay. Uh, let's try 61. Oh, I haven't reloaded with this. That's really good. Schoolboy error there. Okay, man. You could grenade him. Yeah, let's grenade him. I put Borman into Overwatch. So what I'm going to do with Selma, I'm going to re remove his grenade. His cover. Uh, his grenade. Yeah. <laughs> and he used the cover, sorry it's been a long day. Uh, it's probably going to remove Borman's cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. It's okay, because now you can take him out with Borman. Yeah, let's just get rid of him. Oh, 50%. Let's get closer. Let's get closer. He hasn't got any cover. So. Yeah, Borman's only got very oh. short range weapons here. I could have put him in Overwatch. Oh, now he's in Overwatch. I'm not playing very smart here, am I? But let's, uh, let's just get rid of him. It's alright. He can take the shot, it doesn't matter to me. He's a pathetic little pistol ghoul. Here we go. Let's get right. rid of him. I want, to, I want rid of this guy. Still going. All right. ghoul that just won't die. There we go. Just do it over here, yeah. And he's reloaded, so he should be alright. We can get him a new weapon shortly. Okay, that's him out of the picture. Because we want to just, uh, just go for a couple of bits before we get into the fight proper. 
so they're just leveled up there. Yeah, so um, talking about leveling up, how we handle progression in the game is a little bit different. So as you level up, your um, group will gain um, points that you can use to buy mutations. And then when you've got the mutations, they're split into three groups. We have Major, Minor and Passive. And as you can see, in Major we have two for Soma, Minor we have three and Passive we have three. And at any point during real time, you can switch around which mutations are currently going to be active in Tactical. Because different combinations of Major, Minor and Passive will be more useful against certain enemy types. And also for certain environmental things. So for example, if you're going into a bunker map, there's no point Duck's taking his Mothwing mutation with him because you can't really fly anywhere. Yeah. Whereas if you're fighting, say, robotic units, you might want to change your mutations to kind of match to be more useful against robots rather than flesh enemies. Yeah, like the circuit breaker here. Yeah. And then <clears throat> Duck's has a high ground... Sorry, Duck's has a high ground specialist uh, passive mutation here, which we'll come to in a second. Because I think we're going to choose him to be the sniper. And I think there's a nice weapon in here. Of course, all games uh, with adventure themes have to have chests to find items. And this is no <coughs> exception. So we just take this out of here. Uh, okay, so I'm going to nip back to the Ark and pick up some stuff before we go into the battle proper. So let's uh, let's do that now. So why do we do that to the world map? Let's head to the Ark. So the Ark is the home for the mutants. It's where they all live. And it's the only safe place that they know in the zone. Um, but it's a bit of a weird place as the Ark as well because it's run by this guy called the Elder. And he's the only person in the whole Ark who is not mutated at all. He's completely human. He's also quite old. And he seems to know quite a lot about the zone, more than what you would think he should know. So there's some... There's, there's some exploring to do in the game to figure out you know the truth about what's what's really been going on yeah but we won't spoil that for, for no. anyone we'll leave that thing until another time yeah so spoil it another time <laughs> <laughs> we'll spoil it another time yeah <laughs> uh delta's workshop uh this is in the arc this is the home of the, the mutants as lee just explained uh there's a workshop here but run by delta and you can bring weapons to her and upgrade them and modify them and we want it to be a little bit more interesting with um the upgrades and modifying you can do to your weapons so of course we have modifiers and upgrades that allow you to get a better chance to hit or a better range and things like that but we also have a, a lot of um, modifiers for fun things like adding fire to your bullets so that when you fire a shot you can do damage over time by adding fire to an enemy or a modification for a gun which allows for knockback so when you shoot an enemy, they'll be knocked back a couple of tiles, so they can be knocked off high places or into water, and things like that. And we love playing around with things like that, because it's just a bit more interesting. Yeah, and then we got uh, Prip's Bar. Now, uh, all uh, adventure games require some sort of tavern or bar, uh, otherwise we'd have no really good way of getting quests or information uh, assigned to us. Yeah, so Prip's is an interesting character. He owns the bar, and... Um, he also has this side business of dealing in um, what we call artifacts. And artifacts are items you can find out in the zone, which are stuff from our time which is still working. This could be anything from an old beer fridge to a radio or a lawnmower. All sorts of stuff, old hot computer, whatever. Yeah, whatever they find, whatever you can find in the zone that still works, you bring it to Prips. <coughs> and then he will exchange it for what we call a group bonus. He's quite well connected in the arc, so. You bring him artifacts and he can do you some favours. And that's presented like a tree for your group. And you can progress through that and do everything from upgrade grenade damage to upgrade the amount of health packs you're allowed to have or equipment slots or yeah. all these big, big bonuses that affect the entire group. So then, uh, sorry, Elder's uh, room, that's we just explained who the Elder is. You can go and visit him and... He explains more about the world as you uh, go through the game. Now we're going to Iridia's market. Now Iridia, she used to be the top of the stalkers in the uh, in the Ark. Now she's got old and she's got sick because of the zone, the toxic world around her. There's a zone rot, mm -hmm. and the zone rot has basically made us uh, sorry, made her sick. So she now runs this store of the Ark. Gonna buy a couple of things. I'm gonna buy this because it's a bit of a cheap weapon that we can use if we get into trouble. Because the game 
It's quite deterministic. So if we have a seventy-five <laughs> percent hit chance and we go for it, there's still that twenty-five percent where we might get into trouble. Dev teams had a few problems when we've been trying to demo it because we're not a hundred percent ready for the outcome of some of the battles because uh, it takes us by surprise, in a good way. You can buy my heart as well, mate. I'm gonna buy yeah. I'm gonna buy the Aristo helm. Yeah, it's because all games like uh, they need a set of hats. I guess that's the norm nowadays. Yeah. I'm also going to buy another grenade because Selma used to grenade up. So I'm going to buy another one. All right, let's go back to the Ark and then let's leave the Ark and go to the camp. Now, you might have noticed that uh, it's called the Lair of the Horned Devil. But it, in, in the old days, in the ancient times, our time, basically, it used to be a kid's holiday camp. And they call it the Horned Devil because there's a big cartoon picture of a moose and they don't know what that is. They think it is a demon of some kind. Yeah, we like to play around with this in the game. The uh, the stalkers finding stuff from the old days and um, misunderstanding what it is or what it was for. Yeah. I think I think like the radio artifact, where it's like an old ghetto blaster, and they get a bit scared of it because they think it's a bomb because it's called the boombox. <laughs> yeah, we like to play around with those things. Oh, come on, guys! Just trying to bring them along. So uh, yeah, a little bit of a save load bug here. Um, normally we would resume uh, a little bit closer to where we were before when we uh, had so left yeah, the map. Gives us some time to talk, mate. Yeah. Of course, in the zone you can find um, like we got the hat uh, we bought from the shop. But out in the zone you can find all sorts of different outfits and hats, which will give you various passive bonuses, which will help you in the tactical game. I'm going to equip those now. I think I just also want to say about the persistence. You can see that the enemies and uh, are no longer there. I think also the environment should be still destroyed, but uh, yeah. that's uh, yeah, that's not working in this demo. Uh, I'm just going to go into the inventory now, and oh, this is probably the map I've just gone. This this, this shortcuts to these you see. Inventory. I'm going to give Selma that grenade. That let's, uh, let's give her the normal explosive grenade. And in Borman, I'm going to give him this the big C4, C4 just in case, because he'll have a lot, uh, hard time. Uh, the state switch of a duck. Of the game I'm going to well. turn the duck into a more of a sniper character. Yeah. Now. So let's give the duck. This gives him a a, a high level bonus as well. A high so, ground advantage. Yeah, high ground think. advantage. And if you remember, uh, in the mutations list for born, uh, for uh, for ducks, he has a high ground specialist. So we we kind of set him up to be a really good sniper. Okay, I didn't sign up for this. We're in Ghoul Central Station, people. You didn't listen to me. You should have listened to me. All right, I'm going to just have to take a little uh, time just to talk about splitting up and regrouping. You can actually split them up at any time in real-time mode and position them where you want. Um, you can also hide them and prepare them for uh, uh, ambushing an enemy. There's a, there's a straggler there of the ghoul camp. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to position ourselves in a place that will allow us to take him out silently and without bringing the rest of the camp into the battle. We, we want to kind of have the advantage uh, by positioning our characters properly. Yeah. So positioning and hiding is super important when you come to an encounter because you really want to scope around and find characters on enemies on their own that you can take down silently without anyone noticing. But you also want to find tactical positions which are super strong for you. It could be some high ground or some really good cover that you want to leave a character in so that when you do do the ambush of the main encounter, the big, big fight, you're in a really good position. Yeah, you'll often find the stragglers are sort of quite close to somewhere that you'll get a good advice. So you can get rid of the guards, you can go in and infiltrate. Uh, okay, I'm just going to uh, explain what I've done. So I've put the two guys with the stealth weapons at the front. Borman I've left behind at the back because he's only got loud weapons equipped at the moment. So he can just sit and read a book or eat a cake or whatever he wants to do. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm ready to fight now. So let's use ducks. He's got a, a silent... Um, crossbow you don't know who the hell you're best, gotcha. so that should do a good deal of damage to that guy <clears throat> and then Selma she's got a silenced pistol so I should get a good chance of just getting rid of this guy without any you problems <laughs> nice nicely done mate Mess with the wrong girl. so let's just bring everybody back uh, over here see what else we've got okay, else another we've straggler got? there uh, let's uh, let's just mow him down but quietly I don't want to bring anybody else into the battle. Not yet, anyway. No, not at all. Um, so, let's use Selma with her silence pistol. Do you really suck? 
Again, I'm just leaving Borman behind. He'll have his part to play soon. It's just I don't want to uh, bring the rest of the camp up. I did that on an earlier playthrough, and <laughs> it was hard work. Nobody gets to kill you but me. And we also have a bit of a plan I want to formulate. Like Lee said, we want to position the characters in places that uh, give us the best advantage. So I'm taking Duck, who's now uh, designated a sniper because of his uh, abilities and, 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 and equipment, somewhere nice and high. This van we passed just a little bit earlier. This is a good place. Good overview of the camp. Then I'm going to get Selma. And she's got a really big plasma weapon on her back. <coughs> so what I can do with her is I'm going to put her in a position where she can support the others. So I'm going to put her here. And in Borman, I have a special plan for him. Do you, do you remember uh, that there was two guys talking about a large metal man or a metal man? Well, yeah, let's have a little look. Maybe in, in the biggest building, it could be something <laughs> large. We'll see. The ghouls got oh, there you are. So now we know why the ghouls wanted the generator to try and power up an ancient war machine that they found. And early on in the game, we found the instruction manual for this robot. Which told us, if we put disk A in drive B, the robot's programming will be reset and it will attack anything. So that's what we'll do. Yeah. Because it's going to be much, much better for us if the robot is attacking the ghouls and is, and us, rather than he's just attacking us on his own. Yeah, we want to try and get the ghouls in between us and him, so they chip away at each other. You said the and we got a better chance. Bring this giant to life. Did you lie to me? No, no lie, Grey One. Only truth, big truth. Just need a little more time. You sound like you want to die. Do you want to die? No, no. You, the chief, Grey One. You, the hot tamale. I'll get this metal man alive. Trust me. So I'm just moving Borman around here. I'll explain why in a second. Do you remember the, the big guy that we saw on the bridge? Well, he's there. And Borman, he uh, has a stone skin ability at the moment, uh, which we can use to take the uh, shots of the enemies and drive them uh, away from the other two guys. So I've got Borman here ready to be like a tank and draw enemy fire. Ducks here is a high ground position ready for sniping. And then we've got Selma here, and she'll come in really useful with Overwatch or uh, whatever she needs to do to support the other two. So we haven't got everybody in the same spot, otherwise we're going to be in a lot of trouble. Okay, so I'm going to start now. Uh, let's activate Borman. <clears throat> His ranged weapon probably hasn't got enough range to hit these guys, but shall no. we just talk about these yeah, quick? Yeah, talk about the ghouls really quickly that we have here. So we have the rifle ghoul. Uh, they like to keep a medium kind of distance and take shots at you. They can hit quite hard with their rifles, so... It can be a bit dangerous. Then we have the heavy ghoul, the most dangerous ghoul of all. So he's just going to smash through covers and hunt you down relentlessly. And he has a special attack where he can knock you down for a couple of turns. So you'd be down unconscious, um, which is quite nasty in this type of game. Yeah, because the enemies can take pot shots at you when you're down. Uh, and then and we the, have the pyro ghoul, right? Yeah, the pyro ghoul, um, he just really loves fire. So yeah, he's got like this massive sack of molotov cocktails that is just going to continually keep throwing at you which is really bad for us because da uh, fire can do damage over time so i'm just going to give borman his stone skin ability this will make him immune to damage one shot he still can get knocked over but still uh he'll not get any Ooh, damage and in the distance we have the gray one well can we see gray one yeah yeah so she's the leader of this particular ghoul clan um she has a really big energy weapon on her back which She'll try to keep her distance and pick you off when you're not paying attention. She will. Uh, so, she will kill you if she gets anywhere her sights you. on you. Yeah. So uh, let's. Uh, well, I can't hit anybody with my ranged weapons at board, But what I'm going to do, I'm going to chuck a grenade over here uh, to do a few things. I want to hurt the pyro ghoul. Of course, I don't want him to be happy. I want to hurt him. Uh, I want to draw enemies uh, to Borman so they know he's there. And I also want to remove any kind of cover he's got to drive him down a little bit. So let's have a little look. This is the normal explosive grenade, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay, so ducks, activate him. S uh, swap to the state switcher like a handheld uh, rail gun. Pathetic chance on the pyro ghoul. Grey one, not so bad, but guaranteed damage on the rifle ghoul. I'm going to go for him. Give him a headache. So that's woke everybody up now. The whole camp is awake. So everyone knows you're here now, Mark. But you're okay, you're in, you've got the advantage. 
Yeah. So, is your plan properly? Yeah. So I got seventy-five percent. Sometimes I'll miss this. Let's give it a try. Oh, lovely! Nice shot. Lovely. Because it's okay. deterministic. So that twenty-five percent, I could have. It would have changed the playthrough completely. It's never the same playthrough twice. <coughs> Excuse me. So here he comes. The big pain. Yeah. It's not bombing out. So bombing's out for this uh, for this next round. Grey one's activating the robot. Target data in ACF has corrupted. Factory settings restored. All humanoids must be eliminated. I guess she's realised now that um, something's not quite right with the yeah. robot. He said it's been restored. Factory, factory settings. So she's having a go at him now. So hopefully now the robot and Grey one and the other ghouls over there will keep each other busy. Uh, now the rifle goal nearest to me is just taking uh, cover in there with Overwatch. So if I go past his line of fire, I'm going to get hit. So I'm going to move Selma over uh, here. I don't think he can see you. And then I'm going to, I think, get grenade. <clears throat> and I'm going to. I love taking away stuff from the ghoul. So I'm going to chuck this grenade over this guy, take away his cover, give him a bit of a headache at the same time. That'll teach him. There we go. <laughs> now ducks. Good shot on heavy goal, pyro goal, rifle goal. Ooh, I would, I would hit the heavy goal. We need to start chipping him down because he's going to be oh, giving he's us, going to be causing chaos otherwise. Giving us a headache, yeah. yeah. Giving Boromir a headache. Oh, and of course to add insult to injury, the pyro goal is throwing Molotovs at Bormin. So I'm going to take Bormin on a revenge, I think, with that yeah, guy. Next. The, yeah, the rifle goal again being annoying. He's trying to us. flank it. Grey one's taking cover. <laughs> Ah, but she took cover over there. It's not uh, far away enough from the shot of the of the robot. So, the heavy ghouls down there. Now we've used the uh, the moth wings earlier. I'm going to use it once more, just to give me a high ground advantage on the heavy ghoul, even higher than I had before. Proper critical. Yeah. 100%. Yes. Good chance of critical. Yeah. So he's nearly out of the game, which is good. So okay. Selma, where's that rifle ghoul got? He went over he's, here, didn't he's he? He's trying to flank you over there. So. Um... I lot. I'm going to go in the house. Yeah. Not an Overwatch, is it? So, yeah. I'm going in here. And I'll put Selma on Overwatch with a big, big gun. Yeah, done. So okay. Bormin, he uh, needs to. Uh, I think want to get to this guy, but as you can see, I've got a pathetic hit chance here, and that that's my uh, range uh, of movement at the moment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use uh, an ability called Run and Gun, which lets me use both action points. Uh, so I can use the sprint. Of course, that's two action points. But then I got the chance to shoot again. Uh, oh, that's Grey one, but she's missed. Yeah, she likes to keep in the distance here. We'll see her later. So this weapon's got a knockback. I'm going to give it a try. Yes, and it worked. And he's dead. Uh, you should never carry these things in your pocket, Molotovs. Bad for your health. Oh, and our Overwatch didn't work. He's going to come for her. And that idiot's going to take a shot at her. Oh, that's just dirty. Yeah, she's going to suffer. This is not fun with this guy. What's he doing? Oh, oh. it's Grey one having a go at the robot. The camera's a little stuck, that's all. Ah. Yeah. To show off destruction, of course, the robot's running around destroying everything. Which is I cool. I think it's coming for you now, mate. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, dear. Bye. All right. So here we go. So we've got Grey one over here. I'm going to whack bomb into stone skin again. She's not in Overwatch according to this, so I should be alright. I can just move him over here. Um, and of course, toilet cover is very good cover. Well, it's alright, it's high cover. Put him into Overwatch. Maybe I can use a grenade. That's oh, the big bad really, really yeah. yeah. Should I do that? Yeah. It's guaranteed yeah. hitting her at least 50% of what she's got left. Okay, so what we got now, Mark? There's a bit of trouble over in that corner. Um, Rifle ghoul is a headache. 85. Yeah, I want to go for the rifle ghoul. Yeah. Or oh, I can kill Grey one. Can you? Have you got enough range? Yeah, take the shot. Let's get rid of her. Yeah. That rifle ghoul is going to be a headache though. Good, she's down. She's a real pain if she's running around with that uh, plasma weapon. Yeah, you really need to prioritise who you're shooting at. Um, not just based on position, but based on who they are. Ah. Okay, so we lost Selma. That's, um, that's a headache. That's bad news for us. And he's going nuts. Okay. Well, he's done a bit. Oh, is he going to try this? <laughs> I think he's coming for you now, mate. Oh, yeah. Okay. Alright, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get well away from these guys. 
And but can I'm you finish the heavy ghoul though? Yeah, I can. This is your choice. Do you stay here and finish the heavy ghoul, or? Well, the robot takes one uh, one turn to charge his weapon, so I'm confident yeah. he's not going to hit me this time around. This guy. It's a dangerous move, but yeah. yeah. This guy's a bit of a dickhead, so I'm going to get rid of him. All right. Okay, so Borman bomb needs to go and help Selma out. We've got a robot to deal with. Okay. Yeah, but the robot, I I think we can manage. We just need to get that that, that rifle ghoul. He's, he's on fire. He's on. Yeah. So Alright, Robo. Alright. Where is Selma? You could rescue Selma. When a character is bleeding out, if you can apply a med pack to them, they will uh, come back to life. But you've only got three turns to do it in. Let's put him here. We could have maybe used a run and gun. Alright, I need to get this uh, duck out of here. Alright. Yeah, there's going to be a big explosion next turn, so you really want to move. See this where this is going. Okay. Is that in, is that enough space, mate? Hopefully, no, I don't think it is. Am yeah, I moving uh, further away? Yeah, I would definitely. I would go uh, other side of that wall. Yeah. There we go. Go through that window there. All right. So I've not got much for shooting going on here. Rifle well, ghost seems to be happy to be burning to death. But I get too worried about the the big bot. Okay. All right. So uh, let's find Borman. Let's get Selma healed. Are we within range? Ah, oh, just out of range. I need to take a move and do it. It's okay, I can do it. Ah, but you're leaving yourself exposed yeah, to the Yeah, stone skin then. Yeah. And we're gonna come in and save Selma, because uh, I need her to take out the robot, I think. She'll be really useful for that. So you got two, yes, you got two action points, so I can just yeah. move him there. I'll put him partial cover here. Oh, oh. rifle ghouls in Overwatch. Doesn't matter though, because Borman can accept uh, any damage at this point, and he will be immune to it. Yeah, because using stone skin. There we go. Oh, she's, she's going to come out of cover now, the healer. But he's still got stone skin on. But now you can both take care of that uh, pesky rifle ghoul. Yeah. What I'm going to do with uh, ducks, he hasn't got a good shot on this guy here, but I can put him here. And then you will have. Use circuit breaker on him, maybe. Ah, yeah. So it's I'm going to just use circuit breaker, which is uh, ducks' is, uh, one of his abilities. Uh, and it means that he can disable a, a robotic or a mechanical enemy for one turn. Uh, so let's, it works a bit like an EMP, so let's just try that, 75%, yeah, could have missed it, but still, it's alright, good, now Selma, let's get, what do we do, should we get revenge on this guy, yeah, still, I think you should use it, Selma to take the cover off that rifle ghoul, okay. and then have bomb and uh, finish him off, I'm going to put Selma here, and I'm going to put him to overwatch, <laughs> are you sure about that, no, I don't know, I would definitely put her here. grenade his cover, alright, let's put her here, and to try and grenade his cover because I'm sick of him in his stupid cover. She hasn't got any. Oh. So I'm going to put him to Overwatch. He's probably going to go for the big bot. Oh, he absorbed it anyway with his stone skin. Okay. All right, so. Uh, you need to flank him somehow. Unless yeah. Borman's got a grenade. I think Borman might have a grenade in his pocket. Let's have a little look. He's got the big batter boom. That's a sort of debug one. I don't want to use that. I don't want to play it as fair as possible. Alright, you need to flank that rifle ball. Yeah. Somehow. I'm gonna stick him out in the open. He can take a shot from the rifle ghoul. I'm gonna put him to Overwatch. Okay. Now ducks. Right. Let's get some damage dealt on this big robot while he's um while he's held there. Yeah. 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 Do it. Hundred percent. I did that. What do you think about Good. that? Good. Huh? Selma. Go okay. for this guy. Time to kick some ass. You right. Fortunate plant placement there. So. Oh, yeah, mate, your stone skin's worn off. Free damage, though, so right, I can survive that. Shame he hasn't got the charge ability because we could have not through that tree. That's a weedy shot for Worst Borman. Overwatch shot. Is he going to go for the ghoul, though? He's going to go for the ghoul. I think he could be going for all three of you, mate. Okay, so let's get Selma. I think Selma's got a good chance of just shooting the bot here. Yeah. Actually, I tell you what, we might better kill the bot and kill the guy that's next to him. Yeah, because robots explode when they die, so... Yeah, this guy is no exception. That actually worked pretty well. Here we go. Uh, ah! Ah, I can't use that. I said I wouldn't. Let's use Selma. Ducks can actually go ah, for you the can bot. move. You can move closer. Yeah. And then see what's... Ah, you're still out of range. Okay. You take the 50-50? Yeah, let's take a 50-50 shot with ducks. Okay, here we go. 50-50. Yes. yes! Okay. Will Selma actually do it? Oh, nearly. Well, Bowman can probably on his next turn. Alright, let's put. Uh, she got two moves left, right? 
Uh, yeah, I'm gonna just take the shot from here. Yeah. This should be fine. If I'm dying, All right. He's pretty much finished. Okay. If the rifle ghoul shoots him... Yeah, you know, ah! killed himself. <laughs> there we go, yes. That's, uh... That's it. That's it. That's all she wrote. <laughs> Perfect. And then straight back into it.